Okay, so in a follow-up follow up to my last video, I've had time to do a little bit of analysis to what we have here with this guitar and um, formulate a plan for how I'm going to repair it. So I'm going to just show you some of the damage and what we're going to do about it. Firstly, in removing the back, there's a bit of damage here to one of the back braces so this piece here is remained attached to the linings of the side there and it's broken off from, from the back brace here it's a very clean break and it's essentially uh, you know scarf joint um it's you know the the joint itself there is clean it's about three times the cross-sectional area of the wood. So what I'm going to look at doing is warming this up here and removing it from the, the lining. And then I will glue it to this piece of the, uh, of the back brace. As a scarf joint, I'll clamp it in uh, and glue it in. It should be as strong as it was originally. Um, the, the, that was damaged for... Uh, associated with removing the back so looking at the damage that's occurred that, that made us do this repair in the first place we, what we've got here is damage to the x brace and a little bit of shadow here and if i change some light in yeah you can see that a bit better now we've got a long break here to this this x brace and it's, it's remained attached here under this big big pillar and in into the binding there it's also broken away from, from the soundboard. And if I show you this side, again, I'm not right with the line the lighting here, but you can see it's broken away from the soundboard and from part of the X brace there. But again, massive, massive glued area. That, that will glue back. And if I show you, oh, got my finger over the lens there, sorry. Um, if, we, if, we, if we clamp that in, it's, it's going to go back where it should be and, and that should glue back into place. There's a small crack here in the um, sound hole reinforcement. Just here. Right, it's moving a little. But again, when that, when that is clamped down, that crack, that will, crack will close. So as long as we get some adhesive in there, and that that should be be fine. The another area where it's broken is, is this part of the X brace here. I don't know if you can see that. I'm change some lighting around so to make it more visible. Ooh, a little bit too bright. So this this X brace here is broken away. Um, you can see that's quite open. But again. There's a really big glued area, and, and with that clamped into place, it, it should end up pre pretty sturdy, and um, with because of the the big glued area, the piece that was loose that I found when we were um, taking the back off is this piece here, which was the the closing piece for the X brace, which which came off off there, and that's obviously happened when when this was depressed here. And, and, and uh, that, that bit popped off and it, it, it failed to sort of keep the X brace as integrity. Uh, I've not decided yet whether I will clean up this piece and put it back or whether I'll put a new piece on there. But you know, we will just put a piece on there to keep the integrity of the X brace. And, and that really is the major part of the repair other than uh, cleaning up and replacing the back. There are some slight issues about that. So, looking at the back now, we've got one piece here where the back brace has come out, but it's taken a few pieces of lining with it. Now, they will fit back into this section here. And they will, it will close. And if I turn this over now, you can see here where the linings and the back brace are that will close completely and make a, f a firm joint so with adhesive in place and then cleaned off 
that'll make a quite a tight joint so I'm not wanting to disturb that at all some of the other joints have come, come away cleanly so this one for example I will clean off these few fibers of, of willow that were part of the um, part of the lining and I will glue it back into this notch where it came from so with a few exceptions what I'm going to look at doing is um, taking a radius dish and cleaning up this surface I will have to remove this um, heel cap so that, that we can clean up this heel and I'll clean up this whole surface here and we look at the back I'm going to take a going to take a sharp chisel and, and, and pair off the adhesive and any wood fibers that are still uh, adhering to here leaving any little bits of lining that, that are still attached because they will they will fit perfectly back where the where where the wood has come from and then i'll, I'll, I'll obviously ad uh, assemble this dry to start with and and check for for the fitment and everything um, but i'm looking to glue this straight back so the next job is going to be to do the repair to this x brace and to the soundboard and to ensure that the integrity of that structure is is complete before the back goes on and also to remove this heel cap so i can clean up this lining and and the sides try and remove this portion of back brace using a bit of heat from um from the iron again i'm going to cover it with a bit of brown paper because there's so much adhesive on there and that's going to get stuck to the iron so i'm going to just apply a little bit of heat there oh dear i've just just made it steam there right. we go again without steam Just try and soften this adhesive. Get a bit of heat in there. Yeah. Just let me feel what temperature that wood's at. The underneath of that piece of brace is just not warm at all yet. Starting to feel a little bit of heat there now. I don't know why the iron's beeping. Uh, yeah, a little, a little. It's quite hot now, so. We should have some soft adhesive there that we can just remove. Oh, that's so cool. And I'll put that on one side and I'll glue that back onto that back brace at another point. So now we're going to look at repairing this, this X brace and, and the soundboard. So the first thing I'm going to do is try dry clamping it. What I could do is I could put it back on the solera that it was built on and uh, clamp it down to the solera and, and reform uh, the sandboard shape. Um, what we've got is a little bit of bowing here on this sandboard. Again, as I said earlier, I, I tend to make the guitars quite light. There's a little bit of tip happens to this um, bridge here. Um, I, I don't think it's a particularly negative thing. Um, but it won't fit the same board anymore. The other thing, is, the slurry rather anymore. The other thing is, I would have to route out a, a recess for the bridge because it was built without the bridge in, in place, and the slurry is is flat there. So I'd have to make a cutout in the slurry to 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 accommodate the bridge in order to clamp this down. So what I'm going to do is is look at clamping this X brace back in position and and see what that does and i'm going to do that dry i'm going to need a call on the front face because i don't want to mark the soundboard and I, I want to spread a bit of the load of the clamp um i could use all sorts of things i don't want anything too big because i don't want to make the soundboard flat i want to make it take its shape from its tension i've just got this this bit of clothes peg here i'm just going to put that in line with that piece of x brace there and i'm going to go in 
So I'm going, start, I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to change my mind here. I'm going to start with this one here because this is actually more structural. And I'll put that piece of clothes peg in line with that X brace. And I'm going to go in through this sound hole and clamp up that split in the X brace there against this piece of clothes peg. That's good. So I'm happy with how that joint is closed. There's nothing evident in there. It's causing me any problems. It's it's closed that split very well. So now I'm going to try to organise this one in a similar way. So I've got my clothes peg in line with the uh, the X brace. I'm going to go in with a slightly bigger clamp so I'm going to reach a little bit further. And I'm going to attempt to close that joint there. And I'm quite happy with that too. And it's... Um, pretty much um, return the shape to an even distribution, just a slight, slight hollow there, which probably will come back to its natural shape once everything is under tension and the back's on and everything. There's a little crack here in the sound hole reinforcement which is quite closed, not quite as closed as I'd like it to be. Um, but with adhesive in there and, and the moisture from that, it will swell and I'm sure it will attach. I just want to check that the X brace is not detached anywhere else along its length. Um, it looks good. I think we'll go with that. I'm going to uh, put some adhesive in there now. So we will remove these these clamps and coils and uh, get some adhesive in there. Again, as I said, when when I built the guitar, I used a tight bond red label. I'll be using that again for the repair. It does get quite stuck up around the nozzle, so I'll just clean that a little bit. It's important that we get sufficient adhesive in these joints. Um, I like to see glue squeeze out around joints because and then clean it off. So I'm not going to be, I'm not going to mess around. I'm not going to put, I'm not going to be sparing with this. I'm using a little piece of uh, old clarinet reed, which is quite thin and flexible and allows me to get this adhesive in place. So I'm going to put plenty in here. And I'm going to get it all the way. there where it's come detached from the soundboard and I'm going to poke even more in there I'm not frightened of having too much glue in at all I thought I saw something moving then yeah so that other piece has come detached from the soundboard as well so I need to get some adhesive under there where this has come detached. So we'll work that firmly up there as tightly as possibly can. I want that to be very firmly attached. I'm going to run a bit into this crack here. 
in the sound hole reinforcing ring. And then some into this little bit of this X brace joint here. this a little I'm actually opening it here if you care needs to be taken because you don't want to crack it anymore and damage any more than it already is but let's connect that open and full of adhesive so next thing let's get this core in place and get this first clamp on Adhesive makes um, it's it's a quite a, a lubricant really and makes the, the joint slippy. So sometimes you can clamp something up dry and it works really well, but then when you you've got adhesive on it, it makes the surfaces slide. So you need to take a little bit more care, and watch what's going on there, and make sure everything is where you want it to be when you clamp up. A little bit further in there. Make sure that's good and straight. And I'm happy with that. And I've got a squeeze out on both sides. I'll deal with that in a moment. Let's get this other side of this X brace clamped up as well now. So same sort of considerations to be taken into account here. So I've got my core on the outside of the soundboard. I'm trying to clamp as straight as I can and make sure that nothing is out of line. And I've got a good squeeze out on all those areas. So now I want to clean all that excess glue off so I'm going to go and get some some um, some moist towel to, to clean that up with. Um, I've, got, I've got a damp cloth, I've got a small screwdriver. And to start with, I'm just gonna use my, my finger in this damp cloth and clean the, the big stuff off here. And um, get rid of the big bits of adhesive that I don't want and that I can reach and get rid of them. Reinforcing that looks pretty closed now. And in the tight corners, it's really difficult to clean the glue out, so I'm going to put my damp cloth on the end of a small screwdriver here and I can get into some of the corners that I can't get at with my finger and remove that adhesive where I don't want it. It's far easier to remove it before it's dry than wait until it is dry. There will be inevitably be some little areas that I can't get to that are covered by the clamps and what I'll do with those, I'll, I'll get what I can off, like this, and what I can't, I'll remove with a small sharp chisel when I take the clamps off. So um, there's nothing much I can do here now until that glue's dried. 
Okay, so it's been a little while now. The glue's had chance chance to cure. I'm going to take these clamps off and see what we've got. Things are looking pretty good there, I think. I'm not quite sure about how that X brace there is bonded to the soundboard. Looking good for shape, but just still a little bit hollow there where the um, scratch plate was. I think the main sort of impact or pressure was on the uh, sustain the damage yeah so okay what I've started to do is, is clean up the, um, the back here and I'm, I'm taking off some of the glue and, uh, and residue here with the chisel little bits here that I'm leaving I'm not going to try and, and clean that off because this is going to fill and bond to the linings that are already there I'm just going to clean that up and then I'm going to go um, clean the main body up with a reddish board and uh, we'll see how that happens Okay, so now I'm um, preparing the back for reattaching to the rest of the guitar. I've done a little bit of work um, off camera um, and I've cleaned up the edges here using my trusty 20mm chisel. Some of the time I've been working like this, um, working just to remove the, the debris and the adhesive. And some of the time I've been using the chisel like this as a scraper what i don't want to do it actually is remove any significant amount of the rosewood from the back because i want to keep that joint as close as possible so it's mainly removing glue and removing debris and um, so most of this scenario is, is pretty clean and ready to go back together before i put it all back together now i'm going to um give it a bit of a bit of a well clean up really there's a lot of dust and fluff and i don't know cat hair and who knows um that's got into the guitar which obviously players can't get to and i'm just using an old um very worn paintbrush here just to clean this stuff away and i'll do that for the inside of the sandbox when i get to that part there what i've noticed here is the label has come loose i'm not going to replace the label i will keep the original label but i will reattach that and don't use anything fancy for that sort of thing just a bit of crit stick because it is effective and um so that label goes back just as it was before now earlier i was saying that i would look on the label for a date of manufacture which i thought was 2015 and 2016. i haven't put a date on that label i've got my signature there i've got its number six so it's my sixth guitar but what i do do is keep my cutouts from the sound holes and I write on them what I've made there so this this is the cutout of cedar from the sound hole of this guitar and it says Jamie's guitar number six 2013 rosewood and cedar mahogany neck um so 2013 so nine years ago that's when I made this guitar um, and that's that's a fair vintage and I know Jamie's played it a lot um, and um, I'm, I'm you know 
quite quite pleased that it stood up to the test really because it's been a tool for a for a job i'm sure now before i can attach this back um to the rest of the guitar we've got this bit that broke off uh, detached from the linings it's come from here from the back brace um, and it's going to go back nicely so i'm just going to reattach that now so i'm going to dry clamp it as i did before now it's a fairly delicate little piece here so i'm actually using some outside calipers here and i'm going to try and give that a squeeze there and that will hold that nicely in place there and then using a little bit of cork sheet there's a core right underneath and i'm going to look to clamp it down to the back as well and i'm fairly i want to i need to be careful how i do that but i'm fairly happy with that as a process we've got again you know a very large glued area this this is a long split it's you know at least twice the cross-sectional area of the brace so it's going to be a strong joint like a scarf joint I'm, I'm quite happy that that will go back into place so i'm going to get that glued up and uh, we'll see how we go with that again i'm using my red label tight bond for this so i'm going to put glue on the area that was split and on the area of the back which it will attach to i'm going to put it actually on both surfaces of that i want to make sure that it is firmly attached and that the glued areas are wetted as i said before i'm not afraid of having too much glue it's far worse to have not enough now i can really even though the glue is like acts like an um a lubricant in the joint i can really feel when that is in place and um, that's really gone in in fact i think i could get away without clamping that i think that is that the glue would would pull in and and that would adhere but i am still gonna give it a squeeze just for the hell of it really and it doesn't need to be really tight to be honest i'm not the 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 piece is fitting very well it doesn't need to be forced into place it just needs to be held while the glue dries that's not a lot of pressure i'm putting on there i'm not going to try and clean that glue off too much whilst it's wet because to be frank i can't get too much of it there are a few bits that I can obviously get to and it would be foolish not to wipe them away but there's so much I can't get to and I will I'll get them I'll scrape them off with a chisel or something once the glue's dried um, and we'll come back to this later